Double check your rolling. <laughs> yep, it's in. The, yep. As much editing as you do, do your wrists ever get sore? I what about why. like shooting? Like if you're shooting a long event. Yes, yours would. Heavy. I'm sure. My wrists get freaking sore, man. I mean, I play tennis too, so that's. Well, a... I mean, it is a it is a lot of this. So yes, I would suppose that yes, all of that does get sore from holding one. I play tennis one day and then do a photo shoot the next day and then I try to go for a ride and my wrist is like. Oh. Is this a, is this a very very long segue? <laughs> You're just not catching on? Yeah, it took me a moment. <laughs> it took me a really long time. I don't like warning you. I like, like coming in sideways. Well, yeah, but you were like, does your wrist ever get sore? And I'm thinking, <laughs> jokes. We got jokes. Welcome back to Moto Photo Adventures, everybody. We are at Dorchester Colonial State Park, just outside of Somerville, South Carolina. It's a really neat little place. A lot of history. An old uh, colonial town was built here in 1697. Uh, this is like the upper reaches of the Ashley River that's really navigable by larger boats. And so they built boats up here and uh, did all kinds of commerce up and down the waterways to the other colonies. The old uh, fort left and the clock tower is still here from the old parish church. Just a neat little place. Not a lot of hiking trails or anything like that, but if you want to fish on the Ashley River and just enjoy a couple of neat little old historic places, come check them out. <laughs> are you going to become a tour guide in your off season? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my intro. What are we here for? Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> yes. Oh, and um, like it, I have a, I have a clue. Yeah. I have a clue that uh -huh. maybe you can guess it before we'll put a countdown clock. Here's the clue that what is in, in the box. Uh-huh. Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, there you go. Who wrote that book? Uh, Ann, Ann, it's not Ann. Ann it's Ann. Yeah, A-Y-N Rand. I, I looked at, actually looked it up earlier because, you know, the joke. But <laughs> I can't remember how. It, it's Russian. It's Ayn Rand Ayn or something Rand. to that, yeah. that nature. How do you say it? Ayn Rand. So Atlas sent us uh, three of their throttle locks. Nice. One for each of, of the Moto Photo guys. <laughs> so the first question I have to ask you is because these do mount differently for different bikes. Is Trinity a top or bottom? Oh, you're going with that, or? Oh, uh, I did. <laughs> we can't use that, we'll cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trinity is a bottom. She is, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. If your bike happens to have heated grips, supposedly more likely than not, you wanna go with the top version. Mm. If it doesn't have heated grips, you can go with the bottom version. Uh, I don't have heated grips because I have heated gloves. So I went with the bottom, and what did you go with? I don't have heated grips, because I'm not a wuss. <laughs> so you went with the bottom too, huh? All right. Well, that was what was recommended to me. Nice. Um, so I took the rec recommendation. So and they actually say they, on there. Yes. There's a, there's a bottom and a and top. Nice. Yes. So um, basically, these are for cheap boogers like you and me who don't have expensive motorcycles with cruise control. I suppose that's true. Or an older bike uh -huh. or one that doesn't normally come with that accessory mm -hmm. uh, option on your motorcycle. So, yes. So, uh, but I do notice that we're going to have to do something with yours because you yeah. already have a throttle lock on there. I have a really cheap plasticky knockoff one and you know, it does okay, but you flip it in and you're riding along and you take your wrist off and if you're on the highway doing 70 miles an hour after a while it goes, ee you know, so it doesn't hold like it's supposed to. It's made out of plastic. It's pretty flimsy, so you get what you pay for. But this feels really nice. I bet it's going to be a lot more secure. And we have a bunch of friends that actually have and own these thr uh, throttle locks. And that's part of where we got the uh, uh, idea to contact yeah. them because they're well, pretty slick. They've been on my radar for a long time, but you know how it is. You, ha you have a list of goodies that you'd like to get, and they're in a hierarchy of some sort, right? right, right. And I just haven't gotten down to that one, uh -huh. but now I can skip it. Nice. You can cross it off my list. You can cross it off. Cool. So mine's a bottom as well. This one is going to go for Steve because he has an Africa twin mm -hmm. and uh, his will be uh, a top kit. We'll so do an install for his video, his for his bike when we get up there. Right. So what today is, it's just a matter of showing them to you, describing them to you, and then uh, installing it on yours. And then we will do all the riding testing and all that stuff later and give you an update on how it works. Now, I would like to know just out of curiosity too, because, you know, Scott and a bunch of our friends that we ride with have Atlas throttle locks. 
If you have one, put a comment. I'd like to just get a sense of how many other riders use these, but they seem to be really, really well built and I'm looking forward to uh, trying it out. All right, so let's see what we've got in our package, guys. You can hear the, the Hawks instructions. Got some stickers. Those are pretty cool. Little bolt and an Allen key and the little pressure tabs. Cool. On this side. Wow, yeah, that is, that's got a substantial feel to it. I like that. Excellent, so this is basically two pieces uh, it, that it comes with. You've got your body piece down here at the bottom and then this is the clamp arm. So uh, that goes uh, around the throttle lock area like that and um, you bolt it together, it's pretty simple. All right, so we're just gonna take the arm off. We don't need that right now. First thing we have to do is measure which friction pad we need, which spacer we need for the friction pad. So take that arm off and just hold that up on the inner side of your throttle. And there's gonna be a gap between the, the Atlas throttle lock body housing and the other end of your throttle. So if we look at some of these uh, different size pads, they all come with different sizes. And that one's a little bit too thick. It won't go all the way in. A little too thick. Ooh, that one slides in barely. Oh yeah. So basically you want the one that's gonna fit in there nice and easy without um, having too much of a gap. So I think this is the one I'm gonna use. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, once you've discovered which uh, spacer you're going to use on the friction pad. We'll get that installed. Comes with uh, everything you need for the installation. So we're just going to tear apart the alcohol swab pad. Clean this off really good. Let that dry. And then it's just a peel and stick. Piece of cake. All right, so I'm just gonna demonstrate before I actually put it on. When you uh, get everything ready, you've got the uh, correct size tab on the back for the friction plate. Uh, you've got your throttle body lock or uh, throttle body on this side, and you're gonna take this little pin on the arm, and there's a slot right here that it goes into. So once you get that mounted, you just put that in that slot, and then over here you've got some teeth, and you'll click those down a click or two and that'll kind of get things situated. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Next, you're gonna take your uh, included Allen bolt and thread that in. It's already got a little bit of uh, Loctite on it, which is kind of cool. Just rotate it down a uh, full turn is all you need to do for now. Once you've got that in there sort of secure, you're gonna grab this little tab and pull that back up so it's at the very top of that bolt, all right? That gives you plenty of room to work with. Keeping a hold of the throttle body on the bottom here, you're gonna take the arm, and now that back section that you had done a couple clicks to, you're gonna press that all the way down as far as it'll go. So it's nice and tight without any more clicks, secure onto your throttle. Next, you're gonna grab the uh, included Allen wrench and tighten it the rest of the way so it's nice and tight against your throttle. And as you can see, I'm pulling the whole thing out, keeping everything flush to this end of the throttle while I'm doing this. Go slow. Take your time. Make sure you've got this where you want it positioned. Yeah, that is really neat. I'm impressed, you guys. You just lock it where you want. You can even adjust it. So if you're going up a hill or going down into a valley, you can back it off a little bit or add a little more throttle and it stays right where you leave it. And then when you want to disengage, just press the X, done. Wow, 
that is pretty slick and it feels super solid too, not like the old cheap plastic one that I had. I would have to fiddle with it quite a bit to get it to stay just right. And uh, you know, then like I said, it would just lay, let loose on its own. This feels like it's gonna stay there forever. Shoot, I don't need this cramp buster anymore. <laughs> we can get rid of that now. <laughs> Very cool, I am really impressed. Let's go find Jason, see if he's got his installed yet. I have tried the lever kind, but I'm a fighter, not a lever. <laughs> Didn't like it. Uh, so we could also take the cramp buster off at some point as well. So let's see if we can get this one onto my bike. Cool. So first of all, let's get the cramp buster out of the way. We weren't going to need that much anymore, I suppose. We will remove the top arm. And then, like he said, we put it in here to find out which spacer we need. Definitely is going to be this one. It's definitely the skinny one. Clean the area. Let that dry. Boom. There. One click. There we go. Pull this up tight. Push this down tight. Make sure this is where you want it. Like that. And then we tighten it down. Easily peasily. Rolling. 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 Apparently we like Mr. Rolling. Mm. Hey man. Hey man. That was pretty cool. It was pretty easy. Yeah. It took us five minutes. Probably the easiest install we've done. That's for true. <laughs> I don't know of an easier one except Nope, don't know what to be the easier one. I have to say, I mm. feel like it's a very substantial quality product. I'm looking forward to getting it on the road and actually experiencing it because I'm sick and tired of that little plastic thing. I've, I've had it locked on and just it comes undone at the most inopportune times and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Overall, yes, it's beefy, it's metal, it's nice, it clicks, it holds, it every, but, you With, know, oh, you gotta, I, gotta have a, I gotta have one, gotta, gotta have, have a thing. thing. The screw's teeny tiny, like mm. the, the, the set screw here. Yep. Now, it has to be teeny tiny, but this little gizmo fitting into the head of that mm -hmm. needs to be really precise or you will strip it out. So yeah. be careful, go slow, make sure the little, the little wrench is seated correctly in the screw and everything will be just fine. So it's not really a negative, it's no. just a warning. An install appreciation tip. There you go, so Atlas, Thank you very much. Steve will get his shortly, and we will all test them out on the long straight roads to wherever it is that we're going. Yeah, stay tuned guys. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow us and we'll do some testing on the road, give you some real world feedback. If you have one of these, tell us in the comments how you like it, and then you know we can compare notes. Yeah. Cool. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Say have a great day, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Say happy, great day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and stop.